Hello guys and welcome back to Do We Know Them? Episode 17. Really like that number. Seven's my favorite number. The teen is the same day as my birthday. I'm just feeling good vibes. Thank you guys for joining us for yet another episode of what are we going to talk about? Because <laughs> we never know these days. Um, no, we have some stuff to talk about, right, Lily? I actually feel like we have a handful of topics. It's just n nothing feels particularly pressing. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. By the way, I'm Jesse Smiles. Oh, yes, and I'm Lily Marston. Hello, thank you for joining us. Well, we have one main topic today and I actually found it really interesting because if you've been around on YouTube for a hot minute, you know who Todrick Hall is. I feel like he was one of the OG like people that was on here. Maybe not OG. He was like one of the first people to really do like flash mobs, right? Oh, is that what he was on? I know him mostly for the like McDonald's order rap things I don't you know even, when he would like sing no I don't even know what you're talking about what okay I have to pull that out I think of him like, doing like these really like intense orchestrated uh like flash mob numbers nor hold on. so that's even funny I feel like people know him from like a whole variety of things including He's done a lot also like people from because Taylor Swift was friends with him and he was in isn't he in one of the videos yes that's a whole that's uh, a whole thing he's a uh, supposedly friends with T Swift you're probably gonna play it and it's gonna ring up but this went viral in 2010 I was in wow. 11th grade so yeah this I was, was 20 yeah this went viral when I was in high school and that's when I remember first hearing about Todrick was because of this this was like before he went on American Idol before everything that makes sense I feel like college I kind of was like detached from the world and just drunk for four years <laughs> this camera. I have a complicated order okay, go ahead. are you listening Yes, yeah, sir. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want a number six super size with the Sprite and large fries. Mustard ketchup only, please. But, but don't, don't you forget, forget that cheese. I got a sweet tooth, but I'm in a hurry. Can I get one big McFlurry? Give me one of them sprinkled with some m and I'm feeling them. Excuse me, man, but baby, can you tell me, did you get that? Was it too fast? Cause I don't wanna have to come back. No, to the drive through, to the drive through. Can you hear me? Am I coming in clearly? Cause if it's Mickey D's, then please, I'm grabbing it. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. She actually gets it all right. <laughs> the whole order. That's impressive. I, I would have missed a lot of things. Yeah, so that was what I found him with and that oh, was wow. so long ago well and that's the thing he's always been he's very talented yeah that's not for like up for dispute in this conversation yeah. but upon uh scrolling on tiktok i found that there was some drama going on with him and this guy who used to be his former assistant and when i saw it i was like that's random like todrick hall and drama turns out it's not so uh, random yeah i was gonna say i the thing is is i sorry for interrupting no. i'm not like super like up to date. I don't have a Google alert for Todra call on my phone, Same. but I'm not like familiar with specifics, I wouldn't say, but I definitely have heard quite a bit of whisperings of like people don't like him. I had no fucking idea. Have I been living under a rock? Did you guys know that people don't like Todrick Hall? I did not know this. It first started like right after Taylor Swift. And then I was talking to my friend Lisa today and she said that a lot of it came after he was on Big Brother, which I forgot even happened. Well, I actually had no idea that that happened until I started looking more into this. So he got famous for doing things like this on TikTok. I also vividly remember him. I don't so much remember his American Idol phase. I'm not sure if you did, but apparently he made it to the semi finals of like season nine or something but i feel like didn't they kind of like shit on him too honestly i have not seen american idol for so long and why did they discontinue it and then just be like just kidding now we're back with Katy perry what american idol would be better if it didn't feel like they overproduced i the only part i really ever watch is the auditions and right. even those annoy me because they overproduce them so much and you like can't tell what's real and what's not but um, it's only a vague memory that Todrick was even on there. He's been yeah. so many places. Like he has, and been that's everywhere. actually one thing to note is it's not that he isn't successful. It's not that he isn't famous. But wouldn't you think if you've had as many opportunities as him that you would be a little more of a household name? 
Whoa, but perhaps you not, mean like not if you're an asshole. Well, and that's the thing because if you actually look back and even just looking at this video now of the McDonald's drive through thing, just something, just something stirs it. You know me, he, you know? He has just like this kind of like, he knows he's talented. That's the problem. Well, no, and there's nothing wrong with that inherently, but like just the, it takes a specific person to like hold up a McDonald's line and do this. Like looking back on it. At the time I was like, fuck yeah, this is so epic. But like looking back on it now, I'm like, I could never. Like I was oh, not going to lie. Like, the first thing that came to mind was, Oh, if I was the person behind him, I would be yeah. so <laughs> Move, motherfucker! <laughs> but anyway, the other thing that I vividly remember him doing, besides this McDonald's thing, was um, the Glee like audition that he did. He I was like late. See, he's literally done so many different things that could have been like his one like ticket to stardom. And it's not again that he isn't successful, but it seems like why has he had to take so many different? Well, I think too he's a household name in different areas like I think a lot of people who like watch Drag Race and stuff will like know Todrick and he'll be very like you know prominent in their minds yeah. but just like mainstream if you want to call it that like like my mom wouldn't know who Todrick Hall is probably not but I, don't I, I don't think, think your so. mom knows about anybody we talk about on the show Lily <laughs> well I guess yeah but it's like he hasn't crossed he is mainstream I would say but not in the way that like my mom would know <laughs> he reminds me a lot of Trisha Paytas. You know how Trisha's been on America's Got Talent. She's been on like the Ellen show for like fast talking and like just That's everything true. you could think yeah, of. Yeah, except that he's go not to say I not to say that Trisha doesn't have talent, but I mean, he just like he actually is very skilled. Like he sings, he dances, he does. Yeah. Well, I also think that Trisha played into the fact that She's dramatic and all this stuff. And that's what mainly made her oh, so I known. she was on Big Brother too. Because if she just kept up. Oh, she, wa she was the most epic person on Big Brother ever. I love the Big clips Brother. that came out of that. Well, I've never watched it. But when she was on it, I saw so many clips. And it was so fucking funny. If I left right now, do I get no money? Or can I at least get like two days paid? You know what I mean? Or like five days because I was over here early. Like 100% serious. <laughs> you guys don't even have washcloths. <laughs> I can't even wash my body properly because there's no washcloths. I just want a washcloth. <laughs> it's like I can't even scrub my butt or anything because I have a washcloth. Things started like going downhill for Todrick after he did Celebrity Big Brother, which we just said we don't watch. From what I understand, it's a reality show where they're all like away from social media, away from everything. They're in a house. And like, what do they do? They frolic about? What, well, is, what is the point? I guess they all just live there. I, I don't really understand. It has a whole cult following. And I know that there's very much like a Stan Twitter community for it. I'm pretty sure now they're being broadcast like at all times. It's always been that way. Has it? Yeah, because when Trisha was on, I remember it was like on all day. And I was like, what the fuck? Oh, then yeah, I, that's a, it's a weird fucking show. I don't really get it. Please enlighten us in the comments below. But um, I was talking to Lisa and she said something about like that he kind of went on the show thinking he was going to be everyone's favorite and very quickly like <laughs> everyone hated him. And Lisa said the most telling part of it all is that afterwards he was the only person that didn't do press interviews. He like oh. he refused to do any of them. A la Florence Pugh, <laughs> a less likable version. Um, so basically, when he was on Big Brother, some people were like, "Did he forget that like he was being filmed?" Because he would talk <laughs> shit about everyone. He was like the number one gossiper. He was like catty and like sneaky. And then he even ended up saying things. We'll get into it in a second. But he ended up like incriminating himself with certain things about like not paying people and like just While shit down. Like, Brother? sir, you're being filmed. Yeah. Oh well, and which is crazy because I feel like that comes up a lot is that he's like known in the industry for not paying people and oh, just yeah. recently a whole headline came out that I guess he had this fabulous house that he claimed that he bought and very yeah. much like I don't have exact quotes but I guess he very much let everyone believe and I think just told everyone that he bought this house it's his dream house blah blah turns out he didn't buy it he's just been renting it and he hasn't yeah. actually been paying rent so now he just got sued and owes a bunch of back rent you're jumping ahead but yes you're correct Lily sorry <laughs> we're getting there no because it's like honestly there's so many random bits of it and all of it to me was so shocking like I literally was like what Todrick but, why but it's but. interesting if you look though that like the reason I brought that up is because oh wow so the the writing was on the wall back 
during Big Brother if he was letting it slip that he wasn't paying people. And then that's still a pattern that people are seeing now. That's not like a right. random accusation. No. On Big Brother, I know I saw one clip in specific where he was talking about um, this drag queen that like hosted a Halloween party of his. And he was going on and on about how he didn't pay her because he doesn't need her to like sell tickets. He could sell tickets all on his own and I'm not going to pay her. Like it was so weird. And I'm like, you look up. The camera's right there. Do you not feel like that happens with so many people though? With, I feel like. Yes. <laughs> probably yes. this will come back and bite me in the ass. But it's like you know, on podcasts and reality shows, I'm like, did you forget that you're making content right now? There's so many instances where I'm like, why did that make the cut? I get it. Maybe some bad takes we'll have on here or our Christy Carlson Romano thing that But you at least hate. like, it's that you believe it at the time. Like maybe your opinion might change later. It's that these people, it's like, this was yeah. never okay to say. Why would you? And I also think if for reality shows, especially dating ones, there's one in specific that I love. It's called Temptation Island. And it's where couples who are like, I don't know if I've talked about it on this channel, yeah. but it's couples that are like falling apart essentially, or they're like at a crossroads where one is deciding like they want to go further and they're not sure, whatever. And then they go to this island. They each go to their own separate houses with a bunch of single males and a bunch of single females and like try not to cheat on each other. And the other person's watching every week what that per like their significant other's doing. And they fuck up every time. I'm like, you're sucking a wiener. And you know Anthony's gonna see that at the bonfire. What are you doing? Like literally, I don't understand why people don't act like civil in front of cameras. It's bizarre. I think that there's... A certain level of the people doing it just don't care. But then also a certain level of, I think, especially with a show like Big Brother, because I think it's, I would say it's similar to real world, but I think Big Brother, they don't leave. Like they're just mm -hmm. in this house. No challenges so or anything. They I don't can't, think. like they can't even listen to music. So think of like having it's just dead quiet in there. They can't consume con <laughs> like nothing because the, the copyrights and stuff. So oh, yeah. they're just with each other. So I think they just go almost a little bit insane. That makes sense. Kind of forget. Trisha definitely did. She went fucking bad. She's like, get me out of here. I feel like I would be that way too. Um, but anyway, so then back to Todrick. He was like the villain of Celebrity Big Brother. People hated him, but imagine. he didn't know that until he left the house because they don't, they're not on social media. So he's thinking, I slayed. So once he got out of the house, he was like, oops. And like people like hated him, but he also, if I'm not mistaken, went on tour like right after Celebrity Big Brother. He finally, right before he went on tour, came out with a statement about Big Brother. Yeah, he put this on Instagram and he says, this has been the hardest month and a half of my life, but tonight my seventh world tour kicks off in Seattle, which is insane. Seven world tours? That's crazy. That's the thing is he is very successful. Yeah, super. I haven't avoided press because I'm afraid to comment on my experience on Big Brother, but more to protect myself and my mental health to make sure I could actually get my show on stage and fulfill my obligations to my fans and my paid employees. <laughs> oh, that's account. ironic. <laughs> I have no desire to prove myself to people who are never rooting for me to begin with, but I do want to say to my fans that I will be commenting on my experience once the show is open because I feel you deserve it. Thanks to everyone who watched and supported me in the Big Brother house. It was the most difficult thing I've ever done, but I'm glad I did it. I am a human being, a real one. I'm not always nice, not always kind, nor have I ever claimed to be. I'm very flawed. I'm a work in progress, but that's the beauty of being human. I have made a ton of mistakes in my life and I will continue to make mistakes, some publicly and some privately. I thank you, each and every one of you who have stood beside me through those mistakes. Those of you who have loved me and supported me even when it wasn't easy. Your loyalty to me and my team has been incredible and tonight I'm going to be showering you with every bit of love I have because without you all, I wouldn't be living my truth on stage representing my community the way you've allowed me to. I will address things in my own way and in my own time. Until then, thanks for the love, the kind words, the direct messages. It's really meant so much to me. I love you, I love you, I love you. And I can't wait to see and meet you all on tour. Enjoy. What do you think? <laughs> like I kind of have to like eye roll at it. The one part that mainly bothered me, and I just hate when creators like relay this sentiment in general is like, I have no desire to prove to like you people who don't like me. Like, I don't know what it is about when people address things that they always feel the need to say that. And it's like, well, why? I, don't I mean, know. even though you say this is addressed to your fans, that's not who it wouldn't be a thing it, yeah, if I was like, you if, weren't being hated on right now. Exactly. Like, but, you know, I can acknowledge and respect the fact that he's like, I'm not 
always nice. <laughs> like, at least he said it. I do think that that's one thing that when people get famous, it's just kind of like automatically assumed that they're a role model and they're perfect and they're never going to yeah. do anything wrong, which is obviously unrealistic. But at the same time, it seems like maybe once you do get a lot of people watching, if you're on a fucking reality show, don't be a dick. I don't know. I think... It's harder with people who get big for like singing or acting or something that's like their talent versus getting famous for their personality. True. Because he's not famous for his personality. People don't really <laughs> If anything, like, the personality was like the turn off of why he hasn't been more famous probably. <laughs> exactly. But he's so talented and yeah. that's why he's as successful as he is. And then you would think like, oh, that's interesting drama. That's not even the beginning of it. Then we get into his former assistant, Tommy Italiano, which hell of a name. Yeah, is that real? <laughs> I don't think that's his actual real last name, Lily. <laughs> yeah, Jesse last smiles. name Italiano. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of this came out in February of 2022. Okay, so like a lot of this Tommy Italiano beef, but it goes back to even October of 2019 oh, when wow. Tommy Italiano posted a Twitter thread that was coming for Todrick and like his toxic work environment and whatever. So again, this is Todrick Hall's former assistant. He worked with him. He has pictures with him. And he said, I was Todrick Hall's personal assistant for years and I know every detail of his life, including deliberate non-payment to people, racism, sexism assault, sexual harassment, online bullying, exploitation, illegal business practices, the list goes on. P.S. I never signed an NDA. <laughs> Bro, when I saw that, I was like, I think that's every, yeah, that's every check mark. Like, that's everything he could have done bad. He basically just started letting loose at that point, and he posted a picture with Chester Lockhart, who's apparently an actor. I'm not familiar with him. I'm not sure if you are. But Tommy says, I remember when I was on tour with Todrick during Straight Out of Oz, and Chester Lockhart aggressively came behind me on the tour bus and put his hand down my pants and grabbed my dick. In the legal world, they call this assault and Todrick punished me after I told him. During this time he started retweeting other people who were coming forward with allegations as well and you're gonna see like there's another guy that accuses Todrick of bad work environment whatever and there was just a bunch of people makeup Yeah this artists. definitely has not been like a single source kind of rumor. No, it's like coming from a lot of different places. Tommy retweeted other people's allegations and said that Todrick Hall said that his backup dancers were too chocolate. Too chocolate. That's like a direct quote. And he wrote, after Todrick became friends with Taylor Swift, he said to me, Taylor's assistant would not be wearing a fitted hat or Jordans. I need you to start looking more white because you look too ethnic and ghetto. Actual quote and no hat rule went into effect right after that. What? That's like the right? dress code at my middle school. <laughs> Being like, you can't have bandanas. And just weird as hell. Um, but then once this Twitter thread went live, uh, Tommy says that Todrick called him and basically demanded him to apologize of and like course. retract everything. Yeah. And he says, Tommy says, Todrick, I really want you to take ownership for the things you did to me and I'm not gonna say anything. I just want an apology. Then in the middle of the conversation, he started threatening me and says, well, if you say anything about me, I'm gonna go on my YouTube channel and I'm gonna say that you have HIV and that you have unprotected sex with people and don't tell them and I'm gonna destroy your reputation. I'm gonna destroy your career and this will be the last time you ever work again. And then he says, that Todrick Hall called his mom and outed him as being HIV positive. I read that and almost shit my pants. I was like, what the fuck? I don't think you just said that he, he told his mom who was not aware. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, his mom didn't know. Like, Todrick was the one who bro apparently, allegedly, broke the news to Tommy's mom that he was HIV positive. I, this is all news to me, and wow. I thought this was all like, oh, he didn't pay me. Oh, what? No, it's bad it is like conniving crazy snake allegation shit like you're a bad fucking person okay <laughs> so then what basically tommy just kept adding on to that and retweeting people and saying that he cyber bullied one of like todrick's backup dancers because they say that like whenever todrick has an issue with someone he like sticks his fans on people and like is really manipulative with his audience which we have some evidence for we'll get to in a second what makes me really sad about this situation is there's a quote from him uh from tommy that says it's been a tumultuous relationship from the beginning work-wise and personally he is someone that's very manipulative and I was able to look past some of the things he was doing
doing because he really made me believe that I was part of his family. He would call me his brother. His mom would tell me I was like a son. So I really became invested in him as a person and as an artist. And when I read that, because you're gonna see some of Tommy's stuff, he's like a character. <laughs> he's, you yeah. know, like some of it is like- Tommy Italiano. Yeah, Tommy Italiano, who would think he's a character? I actually relate to this. I had a situation like when my stepdad was on the radio and I don't wanna like get too into it because it's like tea in the Spanish world. But like basically his partner like fucked us over, whatever. And I used to call him Theo, like my uncle. Like I used to be like, oh, you're, you're my your fa family. He would carry me like if I fell asleep in the car, you know, carry me into the house, like yeah, things yeah. like that. And then someone just fucks you over so royally and you're just like, what the fuck? We were never anything to you. Like I can definitely relate to that and I feel horrible for him. And anyway, so this was all back in October 2019, then February 2022 again. We're done with Tommy Italiano for the moment being. Um, but there was another guy on Twitter in February that I forgot to mention. His name is Jacob. So this guy named Jacob also comes out with a thread on Twitter with a picture of himself without a shirt. And he obviously, you know, looks very skinny. Okay, so this one says, this is what I looked like in 2018 after working on a tour for Todrick. The meals we were promised never came. Our measly paychecks were always late. I was loading steel set pieces out of the truck every day, twice a day while eating whatever food the venues happened to leave out. I was too broken and embarrassed to go home and too paranoid to complain since I had seen others be made examples in front of everyone. I barely told anyone about how horrible my time with him was because I didn't want it to affect my future work. Todrick is every bit as bad as the rumors claim him to be and more. Mind games are his specialty and my time with him completely broke me. It was a turning point in my life and the moment I consider myself to have officially grown up. I have mostly moved on but every time I see his name in headlines I think, should I tell my experience? Am I doing others a disservice by not shit talking the hell out of this maniac? And the answer is yes. I should be more vocal lest anyone else fall victim and anyone who defends him should be held more accountable. <laughs> Isn't that fucking Shit. insane? That's like straight up like, <laughs> I feel like this this would be from like a person working in like an Amazon warehouse. Yeah, literally. I mean, food, bare minimum. I guess with this Twitter thread, it just started bringing more people, like I said, out of the woodwork. So there was uh, one person who was a former dancer. And especially if the reason a lot of them aren't speaking out is because they're all scared because yes. no one else was. Yeah. But then if they get more confidence, because it's just exactly like sexual it. assault when all the girls... Imagine that you are a person that's working for someone that's a famous YouTuber, famous enough to go on seven world tours, and you have like 500 Twitter followers. You feel completely powerless because all it takes is you one You automatically tweet. assume that no one's going to believe you because they have so many fans right. so what oh yeah my God. so then he retweeted someone that was a former dancer that said i was on this tour and baby it was not worth the headache that's all i'll say was it a great opportunity and did i learn a lot 100 percent. but the cost it did on my emotional and mental state was not worth it whatsoever what the fuck is this guy doing to his people on, on tour and that's coming from a dancer and i feel like dancers are like very mentally tough because of how hard they have to work good and point, how yeah. grueling all the like circumstances around their job are yeah and then a former makeup artist came forward and said, I am terrified sharing this, but it has bothered me for years. Back in 2018, I did makeup for two music videos for Todd Call. The rate was insulting, but I took it because I thought the exposure would help my career. He only paid me for one. Like, what the oh, fuck? Why? Why? That gives major, like, influencer energy of, like, oh, I don't need to pay you because me just tagging you was enough. When it's like, that doesn't pay the bills. This Jacob guy also retweeted something. It was, like, uh, one of those accounts that, like, you know, they live tweet what's happening in the Big Brother house. And um, they need those because it's going all the time. Right. And I guess that's why all of this came out uh, recently is because he was in Big Brother, I guess, in February. So like all of this started happening in February because he was in Big Brother in February. Oh, so. got it, got it, got it. Um, so it says, Todrick says he pays his video editors not a lot of money because it's time off for them. Todrick says he has gotten in big trouble because people think they are getting paid, but he never promised to pay. It is YouTube videos, not paid gigs. What? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got something to say about that, bitch. Do you know how many hours it takes to fucking edit a YouTube video? You know how long it takes us uh, to edit these videos? I was going to say, I think in general, a lot of people, and that's almost, it makes video editing for YouTubers hard to make a full-time job. And I don't even blame them, but it's like the money and time it would take to pay someone to actually spend a good amount of time and effort on your video. A lot of people aren't making enough to make it worth it. Right. So you can't just be like, Whoops. Guys, we have... <laughs> This is kind of a side tangent really quick, but like we've gotten quite a bit of like DMs and emails and stuff of people who have wanted to like intern for us and do things for free for us. And Lily and I are always in the camp of like, hell 
No. Like we're just our like, instant reaction is like, nope, 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 don't not respond to that. Like there's like, so many reasons why for me personally. Number one, I can see it. Story time. Lily and Jesse exploit me for their podcast. And I'm like, ah, no. So I can already see that. Well, and at the same time, we know what it's like to be like need to make money. And then people that offer to do that really hope that it turns into a job, which it could, but like, we can't promise that. No, we we don't want to have false expectations. I don't want someone to put a bunch of their eggs in one basket and then us be like, sorry, we That being making- said, I feel like when we need someone, of course, I would love to like source someone who watches our podcast. Like, I feel like there's so many talented people that watch us and people that have like experience oh, in this field. It's but not like, that we, we don't to want to hire the people, but it's that it's like, if we're not in the position to pay you, we don't want to set up that situation where it feels like It's just messy. I know. And a lot of people were like, you don't need to pay. Like, I just want the experience. And just, we can't. We we can't do it. We're very nervous about that. And like, don't, like, yeah, working for free occasionally to like get your name out, to get some exposure, sure. But like, guys, don't work for free. Don't. Don't. It's (laughs) Like, that's, you should not do that. People will pay you. But now we jump to October 2022. Back to our good old friend, Tommy Italiano. So he has this whole um, series on his TikTok called Todrick Exposed Party, or I guess that's like the hashtag people use. And honestly, it's it's not funny. Like the things that he says are obviously not funny, but like he edits like breaking news, like gifs and like music over like all of these. And it is a bit much. But other than that, (laughs) just focus on the content. He references multiple times statements that Todrick says, and I have no idea where these statements are from because I cannot find them fucking anywhere. So Tommy Italiano is the breaking news here because I really don't know where. Maybe Big Brother? Maybe. Maybe it was an Instagram story because it looks like a black screen. Could have been an Instagram story that expired. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> who's, who's this? <laughs> the comments are like, sir, do you want us to focus on what you're saying or what? <laughs> it's a bit intense. Okay, here we go. Tommy Italiano here. As many of you know, I'm Todd Hall's former assistant. Today, I'll be addressing his statement that he recently made. One of the things I thought was really bizarre was this statement. There are always three sides to every story, but I just think personal matters shouldn't be turned to the internet over jealousy and vengeance. People use me for cloud opportunities and to convince themselves that then nonsense. Well, the irony is that he attacked Kim Kardashian literally for someone else over purely personal matters. He didn't even have a vested interest. The only vested interest he had was exploiting Taylor Swift, Kim Kardashian, for clout. I will not, however, admit guilt for things I did not say. Oh, there's a statement. Man, Jesse, if you would have just fucking watched. He deleted this because I have not seen this on his Instagram. But Todrick said, do you want to know what my least favorite part of fame is? Having a bunch of hypocritical strangers on the internet trying to convince you to agree with them about who they think you are and being mad that you won't. I'm a human being. I make mistakes and I learn from them. I will not, however, admit guilt for things I didn't say and things that aren't true. That I will never do. I have sat around for years and stayed silent while shady people ran amok on the internet with my name in their mouth because they have no talent, no past, no future, and more importantly, nothing to lose. That ends today. I mean, he he's the first to say, like, he's not always kind and he's not always the nicest. <laughs> we but, just have to go back to that. I, but I feel like there's a way to, if there's horrible rumors going around about you, I feel like there's a way to denounce them without having to be like, all of these talentless hacks that are coming from, Dude. Like, I feel like it's always the exact same kind of statement. You I'm know? just going to say it right now. If there's one thing I've learned in this whole internet fucking game is that when there's smoke, there's fire. Everybody's not going to just talk shit about you because they woke up that morning with their ass itching. It's not going to fucking happen. And they always want you to believe that too. They do. They're like, I have no idea why everybody I've come in contact with hates me. It's like, well, maybe look in the mirror. The nature of the internet, the nature of fame. And it's like, well, I mean, not for everyone. (laughs) Most of us actually don't have to go through that. Like we will get the, we just had someone who commented saying that Lily was a see you next Tuesday. Okay. Remember that? Uh, Guys, she was being bullied. They come in waves. But I feel like I'll read just like the nicest comments ever. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly one day we only will get like five and all five of them are just like 
fuck Lily. And maybe it's, I hope it's just one person yeah. on multiple yeah, accounts. Yeah. But literally I'll read them and I'm like, oh my God, what the fuck? She just what texted me I a do? picture and like, was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Actually, the majority of people are so nice to you and me. Like, we love you guys. That being said, one thing I can get on board with is that everyone on the internet gets hate comments. That's 100%. You can go to like an angel, like a literal angel that like came from above and someone will tell them they're fucking ugly and they need to lose weight yeah. or something like that. That is the internet. Yeah. That's the nature of the internet. People that have personally known you in real life, worked with you, anything like that, do not just come forward and talk shit about you. That doesn't happen. Maybe That's in like a super rare case. And similar to like, what would like these, they're using my name for clout. Why would that give them clout? But it's the same fucking rhetoric they all use because they have to justify it in their head. It's the same as like girls reporting sexual assault. And it's like, oh, they just want attention. What attention would that be providing that's good? It's like just, this is only going to hurt them because people are like, I don't want to work with that person. Even if they think what the person said is true, like with any of the employees, honestly, that might hurt their chances moving forward to work for another horrible person because that person's like, um, that person has kind of loose lips about their work environment. I don't really want the liability. Ethan, actually, Ethan and Ela had to go through that because there was like a, a stage of people who were leaving bad work reviews. Like if they had worked at Teddy Fresh and they still don't know if it's like I, I real or that, not. I saw that but weren't I felt like a lot of them seemed fake. Well, th that was the speculation is that they were probably fake, but that being said, when Ela addressed it, she's like, you know, if that is true, like I do want to fix that. Like I don't want that to be the case if that is someone who actually worked at Teddy Fresh because I don't want that to be the work environment and I don't think it is. Like I don't think that's how my employees feel, but if that is how someone feels, I want to fix it. And that's more of a mentality of someone who's a fucking actual boss that cares about their employees versus like these people just want clout. Like I have had some people, and as everyone knows, some drama with people who, yes, have outlandish things to say, but the majority of the people, that being 99.99999% of the people that I've come across, even the people I've had issues with on the internet, don't have anything to say. Like, it's like, I don't have anything to say about them. Even if, like, you think I've only had one fight with one influencer in my whole fucking life? That, no, that's what made it public. I have had fights with influencers. I have had fights with plenty of people, you know, you just don't mesh or they do something shady or whatever the fuck. And that being said, we're able to just be like, yo, we don't, we don't mesh. Let's just move it up. Let's move it along. Most people don't find joy in engaging in that kind of like Todrick is such an example of someone that's like blames it all on clout. And it's like, again, what are they getting out of it though? Like you're acting like they're suddenly like cashing in their golden ticket to fame. Like, I don't think that they actually genuinely believe that. I think that it has to be. And I pretty sure we've said something along these lines in an episode before but it just has to be very hard to face that kind of reality like in the mirror you know when you have people saying like I was starving like I was not well mentally this was so horrible that's really fucking like what the hell you know and it falls into two buckets that it's like okay d he either knew it was happening and just didn't care or he didn't know it was happening is finding out, or I guess three buckets maybe. One, maybe he just thinks the guy's making it up completely. Yeah. But then there's a bucket of like, maybe he's like, oh fuck, is that true? And then it's like such a panic because you can't take a time machine and go fix it now. Yeah. So what are you going to do except try and just damage control? And I mean, am I the only one that would be look? just mortified and just be like, I'm so fucking sorry. Like I was a mess. Kind of like Tanacon vibes where it's just like, I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing. Or literally me and everything I've ever done. In my <laughs> I'm just life. dumb. But, <laughs> sorry. Um, no, well, and even in this situation, again, like it, it, he could have even come out of like, I'm horrified that that those were the conditions I had no idea and I will make sure that nothing like that is ever going to happen move forward like some kind of like I know I can't fix it but I'm gonna change not just like totally acting like these people are just making shit up out of thin air and doing it to tarnish his name like bringing down Todrick's not gonna suddenly give them a bunch of jobs that's the thing is you're a person that came up as like an indie artist who's like trying to be on American Idol trying to make it viral on YouTube trying Trying to be on Glee, anything you could do. And the people you're fucking over are indie artists. Like people who are just fucking out here doing freelance work and shit to make bot like 
I can't. That to me is so But that goes back to like even the first video when you're like, I get a weird feeling. And it's his ego that shines through from the fucking drive through videos that are filmed on a potato (laughs) to now. Okay, it was 2010, Lily. (laughs) It was probably a flip phone. It was like a really nice camera at the time. No, but it's like he thinks that he deserves these people's effort and all of their work and that he's giving them the opportunity to work for him, not that they're helping build his I just genuinely don't know how you can have that mindset when you were like struggling coming up. Like, I just don't, I don't get that. But anyway, uh, this was the next one in the Todrick Exposed episodes. Todrick Hall ordered to pay $100,000 in unpaid rent after being sued by owners of a plush home in Sherman Oaks. He once claimed he purchased. Todrick, just pay your bills. <laughs> that was the second one. Well, I, that's great. I, how is it that, I mean, it looks like a very nice house from what I've seen. Um, So I wonder how much the rent was. I'm right. like, how do you get that? Like, how have they not evicted him already? I think that it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, because my brother tells me all the time, is like renter's law in California are very pro- renter not so much landlord and so it makes her life a living hell to like evict um could have been something like that it could have also been something of like maybe i mean a hundred thousand dollars is that like a whole year he didn't pay or like how much you pay yeah that's what i'm saying i'm like i mean the house is nice and like that isn't gonna be a cheap rental so i'm like probably wasn't even a whole i i don't know if you have that much money to rent such a big place why not just buy a house? And I know it's California and like nobody buys houses because it's like ridiculous. Well, and also like, why isn't he paying it? It feels like he has it. Um, then Todrick went on TikTok and this is still up on his TikTok. Oh, so this is his first like actual statement. I don't know. If with his face. Be. Stop hanging out with Todrick after their seasons because he is not a nice person. I really wish that people who have never met me would just... Stop talking shit about me on the internet. Like the audacity that you would feel comfortable enough to post a video about a perfect stranger publicly to anybody who could see it to declare that this person that you've never met or breathe the same air as is not a nice person, which is a pretty ballsy statement, might I add, Miss Abigail, to increase your likes, your followers, your popularity, and to start a witch hunt against this person who is a human being and who has family and friends who see this fucking bullshit that you post would, in some people's opinions, make you not a very nice person miss thing this might come as a news flash to some of you but reality tv is far from real and you cannot judge a isn't it just filmed all the time it's not edited no i think they do edit something no maybe there are edited parts put out but i think that it's just like streamed like i think you could like pick camera angles oh like, yeah i think you maybe can. i'm very wrong but i'm like sir you weren't on like jersey shore <laughs> like yeah reality tv is fake as fuck but they're editing it to make it fake this doesn't fit i think that's why big brother has such a following because it's different than other reality shows because it's not edited did the producers make you talk shit about literally everyone in the house and talk exactly. about how you don't pay people because they're not relevant and like shit like also that was all you. him being like <laughs> saying someone's not a nice person S- sir didn't you say that you're not always nice i mean technically Ooh. it's paraphrasing but you you actually were the one to say that yeah. so just but still like if you're gonna own it own it through and through like i'm not nice bitch what what about it <laughs> but now he's he's a delightful man that is just he wants to protect him and his family and why do you think people i I'm asking a question I know the answer to. Like, the effort to make themselves, like, to humanize themselves, to gain the sympathy and, like, understanding of others is so strange to me. Because you shouldn't actually have to be like, I'm a human. Because we have eyes and we can see you're a human. And that's just weird. I feel like a lot of the time it's like, yes, I am absolutely won't deny that people do forget that there are real people behind internet personalities and right. TV personalities. But not to the point that reminding them makes it go away yeah it's just it's not like people hear you go i'm a human they're like oh shit i forgot yeah i think it's a just something to throw in there to be like don't be mean to me like it's just a weird like tactic that he used but anyway and they always bring up the family i'm like are people going after your family no he's just like i have family it's like me too (laughs) <laughs> what about I'm it pretty sure everyone does <laughs> reality tv is far from real and you cannot judge a person's moral and ethic compass based on a social experiment where they are pushed to their limits forced to live in situations that are pretty much unlivable forced. with perfect strangers <laughs> and decide that that is who that person is 24 hours of the day 
I don't think that that's fair. And I don't think that there's anybody watching this who doesn't have skeletons in their closet. Okay, I have to, I know we keep pausing and I'm sorry. I just have to say, first of all, if there's anything Trisha Paytas has shown us is that you could have left at any point that you wanted to. And that you voluntarily went on the show. Yeah, you, you knew what you were getting into. into and I don't want to like be like victim blame me about it because just because you choose something doesn't mean that it's not hard or that it's not a challenge for you. So I don't want to say it like that. But you knew what you signed up for. Yeah, like if I go on an MTV show, I know that they're going to try their best to make me look like a piece of shit because that's what MTV does, you know? And it doesn't mean I'm going to love it and be like, yes, I'm so glad everyone thinks I'm a piece of shit. But like, don't go on reality TV. You could, he has his own thing. You could have just kept touring, do your music. Don't go on reality TV. Fuck that. My point, why does he need to put his hand in all of these? Like, I feel like they're platforms to launch people's careers. It's like, you already have a career. Why are you doing this? Yeah. Like, why bother? Yeah. And then to say that he's forced into situations. No, you volunteered to go into the situation that you fully knew what you were getting into. It was unforced, and then you yeah. just didn't like it and reacted badly. <laughs> Exactly. Shamed of some of the things that they might have said since the day they were born. It's literally the point of being a human being and you're not Jesus, you're not God. I don't even believe in Jesus or God, but I definitely know that they are the only people that can judge me. I said they, that's kind of progressive for me. Come on, non-binary Jesus. Anyway, I have sat around for years. Very strange interlude. <laughs> what, what I, that was the most unnecessary portion of this uh, so far. And if you would have sent this to me and like he was my friend, I'll be like, you need to cut that out right now. <laughs> do less, do less. Years and years and years and let people control my narrative online and say I don't pay my dancers, that I lied about my house, that I'm a bad person, that I'm this evil monster. And up until now, I've kind of been like, okay, no one's gonna believe this. But at this point, I'm just not gonna let people like you paint my narrative. I'm sure you're a lovely, sweet girl and I'm sure that you're just trying to survive out here in these TikTok streets like everybody else. But you gotta find a way to do it that's not tearing down somebody because I'm a human being and I'm over it. And not that I think that you're entitled to this information because you're giving me entitlement the musical already but i'm gonna give you just a few of the answers to the things that you're using to tear me down to just explain to you some perspective because i was always taught that there are three sides to every story their side my side and the receipts i did say that i was the only person of color in the house that was playing the game because out of todd lamar and cynthia i was the only person who had ever watched big brother and they did not know what was happening in the game and that's just facts i have made over 10,000 cameo videos for my fans and i am grateful to all my fans for buying those cameos but at some point they have not been the most original videos. They have been more copy paste, happy birthday videos. That makes me a bad person. I'm sorry, you let me know when you're famous and you're making 10,000 cameo videos, how original each one of yours are. And then we'll have this discussion again. At the end of the day, yes, I've made mistakes. I own up to that. I am not a perfect <laughs> human, but I'm not gonna sit around and let people tear me down because guess what? You guys might have a big Twitter following, but I have fans too. And up until now, I have not unleashed my fans on anybody, but you're about to find out exactly how my fans feel about you bullying me. Have a good day. Oh my God. Um, that one could have stayed in the drafts. I can't fathom with no irony in my voice saying, I'm gonna unleash my fans on you. I can't imagine saying, maybe one day you'll be famous too. <laughs> First of all, 10,000 cameos. How much does he charge for one? Uh, literally when he said that, I was like, maybe you should use that money to pay the back rent on your house. And everyone else. Maybe some food for your dancers and uh, also, people carrying wow, your stuff. Also, wow, I mean, hats off to him. 10,000, that's impressive. That many people want cameos from him? I just have a feeling he's lying, but I could be wrong. <laughs> First of all, $50. So how much is that? Let's do the math. 50,000. Oh, no, 500,000. Wow, oh we're dumb. <laughs> he definitely could have covered the 100 grand in the video. Well, that's according to him, but you're going to tell me, okay? Because I would argue that the people that go on Cameo are the diehard fans, which by the way, I was on Cameo and I I got like five requests and I never did one because it would make, give me so much anxiety and then I got kicked off for not ever doing them. I have gotten, um, cause I, there was a girl that I worked with at one point that then started working there and she emailed a few times, just like, we'd love to get you set up, blah, blah, blah. I feel so uncomfortable doing that. Like just tweet me and ask me for a birthday. I've sent so, people, I'm yeah, like, and don't, you want to pay me? Like, no, that's so awkward. Yeah. It just feels like you're scamming people, which I'm not saying it is. Cause I could see how, like, I actually ordered I a cameo. It's valuable. It just feels weird to have people pay for your attention. I've ordered one cameo and it was from, um, um, this guy from 90 Day Fiance? <laughs> of course you did. Miss Yim, uh, your sexy wife, Jesse, got this is this for you, this video for you. And you are so much lucky to have 
her. <laughs> I think there's certain situations where it's really funny, like especially for like someone that just has a random obsession with a certain celebrity, that especially guy, like yeah. the kind of obscure celebrities. It's hilarious. I think like especially old people love it because it blows their mind so much that you could possibly get that. That is so funny that you just said that because one of my mom's friends, her husband <laughs> got her one of an actor from a TV show. And my mom was like, look at this. Can you believe this? I'm like, yeah, I actually can. They don't realize that cameo is a thing, so they think it was some kind of personal favor that you got. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so he has sold apparently, according to him, right, ten thousand. However, you're gonna tell me if those ten thousand people allegedly are diehard fans who come to you and pay you fifty dollars of their hard-earned money, that only two thousand three hundred will leave a review. Does that seem right to you? You're talking to someone that doesn't leave a review on anything. So, I mean, I don't know. It's a bit fishy. Also, all this like, oh, with stuff people say on the internet, with the house thing, wasn't that like a lawsuit? Like he was ordered to pay that? I believe so, yeah. <laughs> like that's giving very, it's giving a lot of Ace Family vibes. Of like, he, oh my God, up until no, the last it's moment. it's all lies. <laughs> you're like huh like it's no it's legally like you can see it right there their house is literally being auctioned off and they were like everybody will just say what they want to say about our family for clout and we're like this is like more than gaslighting i don't even know what this is oh they would totally be friends with him i know so yeah the house thing is confirmed the backup dancers like those are actual allegations from people that were on tour yeah. with him you think like all the villains of the internet no nah. I'm not saying he's not. Well, yeah, actually, I am kind of saying he's a villain because he's done a lot of shit that's like fucked up, allegedly. Yeah. Um, do you think they all get together to like garner the same vocabulary of like the narrative? Like they share a Google Doc. Yeah. And it's like, here's the memo of like, it's a fill in the blank, kind of like a Mad Libs. Oh, kind of I swear it's copy and paste, all of them. They get it from the same places like fuck boys get. I'm just not ready for a relationship. Literally. <laughs> and it's just, it's like, okay, we get it. The narrative is false. Everybody's mm. wrong. You're the only one right. You don't owe them anything. But, but here um, it is. You're just getting this off your chest. Yeah. <laughs> but back up for a second. His comment about it, were people criticizing him because he was just like saying the exact same thing in multiple cameos? No. He said on Big Brother that he doesn't really like personalize them and gave that kind of sentiment of like, yeah, like I've had so many cameos type of like, I don't really do anything special with them type of thing. And people took that as... You don't give a fuck about the people paying money for you to shop. I guess I, I don't know how literal he's being with that. Like if he, but I don't want to say it's fine to dial it in, but I do get that if you're getting a bunch of random people that you do not know asking for birthday shout outs and all, I don't really know how Cameo works totally, but like if all you have is their name and like how old they're turning or something, you're not going to have a whole lot of variety in yeah. how you deliver it. <laughs> so like that I get, but all, if he's like, openly being like yeah i don't give a fuck at all don't put any effort into it i why would you admit that um okay so then we have tommy italiano reacting to that video have a good day he has a history of using his social media to bully and threaten people into silence he's done it to scooter braun he's done it to kim kardashian he's done it to me he's done it to his ex-boyfriend oh wait 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 hold up so he shows in this tiktok that in what month is seven july in july of 2019 <laughs> todrick tweeted can you guys report tommy mckissick which is tommy italiano oh we know his last name now as much as possible so he gets blocked please can you spread the word through insta and twitter Wait, this is super fucked up. Listen, like, I get it. If you don't like what the fuck this guy is saying or whatever, you cannot just, like, sick your fans on people and just be like, well, report him. Like, that's literally an abuse of your platform. Ugh, I hate when fucking creators do that. If you don't Again. like that people could say what they want about you and you want it to all be daisies, first of all, maybe be nice to people. But second of all, like, let people... You know what I do? I mute all of them. First of all, I have my mentions so that I can only see it if people are following me. That one beautiful Same. but then yeah. you get the people that follow you just to be assholes so that you know you can see what they're saying and those people i don't block them i just mute them and i say sayonara i'll never hear from you again it's like a brick wall why do this i'm not gonna lie sometimes i respond occasionally <laughs> usually it's because i have thought of something that i find funny that i'm responding with that right, it's right, like right. giving me just some personal gratification to be doing it but I would say one of the more gratifying things can be muting because that person 
can be going off and getting oh, and like they I do. had someone that they were so upset that I was not acknowledging their tweet and they just kept tweeting and I muted them but then I like went back later and unmuted they had tweeted me so many fucking times and I'm like wow how was it wasting all of your time doing that knowing I didn't see any of it you don't understand I must have thousands of muted accounts and they just go on and on I guess I don't I wouldn't actually know because I just don't see it and that's the best thing Twitter ever fucking did there was a time you know when all like the drama and stuff was happening a couple years ago certain people were like looking into my tweets and like trying to dig up dirt on me and like you, you know how the internet does and they found tweets of like that I used to say because you know how Dane Cook used to be like oh this makes me want to punch a baby I used to say jokes like that where I'll be like oh it's Monday it makes me want to punch a baby and people were quote tweeting that and being like I'm scared for Jesse's child. Like what? I, and I just the most absurd thing I've ever. I had seen. to retweet that, and I was like, "Are you f like seriously fucking kidding me? Like you think that I'm like punching my baby when someone really thinks they've done something?" And you're like, "Oh, sweetie." <laughs> That I get it. And I answered like some petty ones. But after that period, it was like a two week period where I would actually answer people and just see how they would get like actual gratification from it. And that bothered me the most. And so I was like, no, motherfuckers, you will never hear from me again. And so I just mute all of them. People can literally be telling me to go freaking jump off a cliff. And I'll just be like, OK, mute. No I, block because the block gives them satisfaction too. Exactly, exactly. Because they can tell. Muting, they have no idea. The most I have ever liberally used the mute feature and really, really just appreciated it was, um, and I feel like, have I mentioned this on the podcast before? When uh, good old Donald Trump retweeted, so he quote tweeted something that, that I was had traumatizing. Tweeted. You guys, I have never, oh my God, the just mortification I felt not because like I mean I stood by my tweet every it wasn't even well, a bad tweet was the whole it? situation was so weird it was the beginning of the pandemic and when all the Black Lives Matter protests were happening and he had posted something yeah it was like him filming people on the street or something yeah it was something he was arriving somewhere and I don't even think I quote tweeted his video it was like his maybe as campaign persons. And I said uh, something about there not being like a bunch of like armed forces people there because the protests with like 20 people that I had been to, there was literally like army people there. Right, and right. then I see this and it's literally like an entire crowd full of people and there's absolutely like no police presence whatsoever. Didn't even comment on the fact that no one was wearing masks. It was in Maine or something, mm -hmm. like right at the beginning of the pandemic. But then Trump quote tweeted me and said something like, yeah, because they're not a bunch of Antifa people. Like he definitely didn't understand the sarcasm in my tweet and then spread it to, but it was the most, the biggest clusterfuck. I, that feels I've like ever. a fever dream. It was. Because you have to imagine, like not only did he have so many, and this is before he got banned off Twitter, his millions and millions of followers. Do you know who most of those millions of followers are and what they're, Oh my God, it was, it was an experience. I have to say something that I never thought I'd talk about on this podcast. A while ago, it was definitely before the pandemic. I am not a f fan of Donald Trump. You're okay? not? I'm not sure if that shocks you. <laughs> so yeah, I really don't fucking like him, whatever. Do you remember when the Marie Kondo stuff came out? If you don't know, she's like a organizer, I guess. And she shows you yeah. how to like fold shit. And then like, if something brings you joy, you should keep it. If it doesn't, you should like- Declutter your life. Yeah, exactly. And so <laughs> there was this meme, granted, would never use this meme again. But at the time, I thought it to be current and funny. And it was Marie Kondo holding a gun that says, you do not bring me joy, goodbye. <laughs> and I thought, okay, me, I was wrong. Okay, but I thought that would be funny to reply to a Donald, Donald Trump tweet with. <laughs> Lily, when Bad I tell idea. you. No, <laughs> when I tell you. No, the worst idea I've ever had. I tweeted it, right? And I didn't say anything. I just put that, which is like, obviously, haha, <laughs> hashtag joke. Like, I'm not going to kill him. Like what? So anyway, so I put it and then I guess like 20 minutes passed and I went to go grab a snack. When I got back to my phone, there was a horde of Donald Trump MAGA supporters tagging the FBI, Lily. 
tagging the FBI <laughs> and the Secret Service and telling them that they needed to come and investigate me. And when I tell you... That's your Ethan Klein moment. <laughs> was my Ethan Klein moment? I deleted that tweet so quick and I was responding to people being like, it was just a joke. I don't know what to say. It was a Marie Kondo reference. I would never shoot anybody. Bro, I was shitting my pants. I remember texting Wait, I Jen. I don't even understand why it's a... Because it was a meme of her holding a gun saying, oh, like, you don't bring me camera. joy. Yeah towards the camera oh i thought you were saying she was saying the gun doesn't bring her joy oh no a person doesn't bring her joy and she's shooting them <laughs> i kathy griffin okay i pulled the kathy griffin and i almost got canceled and i was like oopsie that went too far like it was three hours at least minimum of pure hell because they had screenshotted it and even though i deleted it people were literally tweeting me like you can't get away from this like we screenshotted it i was like no should we get back to todrick <laughs> We shall. Um, okay, yes. let me just keep playing this TikTok. Me, he's done it to his ex-boyfriend, Danny. The list goes on. And let's not mention the fact that he had an employee and fan attack me at a bar and try to steal my phone because they don't like what I'm tweeting and posting. You had someone physically take his phone because you didn't like what he was tweeting? But he could log. I believe that. He could log in somewhere else. I don't know. Obviously, this is alleged, but it says on the screen here, and I do believe that. Where it's like, do you believe Todrick or the dozens of people who have spoken out? And that's what it comes down to, doesn't if it? He's like the common denominator. I get then... it. That it is what it is. You can hate that all you want and be like, the world's against me for no reason. Likely, statistically, uh, historically, that's just not true. Like it's probably because to me, it doesn't seem off. like all of these individuals have been meeting on the side Todrick like acts like people are organizing this like he did his flash mobs and it's like no you just treated them like shit and they all came forward literally <laughs> gaslight they double down and they try to attack the person who's criticizing them to begin with you're not gonna win this battle Todrick you are wrong in every way oh I felt that sentence hardcore. And then this one is him talking about the that Todger Hall got sued for $60,000 in unpaid rent. Is this different than the 100 grand? For same home he claimed he bought. I don't know. I think it's the same house. Todger Hall sued for $60,000 for unpaid rent for same home he claimed he bought. Todger claimed he bought that house. Ha <laughs> ha. Told you so. I told you so. <laughs> but seriously. He's a pathological liar. Actually, if you're gonna buy a multi-million dollar house, yep. which he alleges that he bought, but from the records I've seen on Twitter that people are reposting, it's argued that he doesn't even own the house. But if you're living beyond your means, you shouldn't exploit other people's free work. For sure. So you can do that. So apparently he's been calling it out for a while and Todrick was, I guess, like insinuating that he owned the home when he definitely does not. So I'm not going to say that Tommy hasn't been out around the town right in his mouth, but it seems... Literally out on a skateboard <laughs> you know, in town. Literally, quite literally out of the town. It feels like if he was doing that and all of the stuff he was saying was not true, then he would have received a very swiftly delivered, no pun intended, Taylor Swift, uh, swiftly delivered cease and desist and been told to not say any more of the shit. But instead, Todrick goes on his TikTok to respond. It just seems like not the actual steps you would take if this was legit. I feel like this was so much more intense than I originally thought. When I went into it, I was like, oh, it's just a former assistant and alleging some things. But there was a lot there and I'm honestly shocked. And like high school me is a little, a little depressed. I only had one other topic that I wanted to touch on because I felt personally a little connected to it. The girl at TwitchCon that broke her back. Oh, um, what's her name? She's a- Adriana. I saw that on H3, yeah. And she's a she's a porn star, which- Well, she's not the feels... only one that like broke something. People broke their ankles and shit. If you guys don't know, at TwitchCon, there was this like foam pit that you could jump into, but it wasn't deep enough and it wasn't on a soft enough surface. So people were literally going in there breaking shit. Okay, so you can see, it's like one of those things where you're like, oh my God, you're Ooh. like battling the other person like with a thing. And, but apparently this foam pit was set up like underneath it is straight concrete. And you can see that there's not a whole, like there's not a lot of layers of these foam things. And I hate these things to begin with. Anytime I've gone any of them, I hurt myself. And usually it's like a muscle situation because I can't get out or something, but that's because they're deep. This is not deep. This was like someone set it up last minute and threw some foam on the ground. So she beats her friend and then goes to celebrate and like does a toe touch and jumps off. 
and you guys, I had to watch it several times because it's like you watch it and you're like, oh, well, she lands on foam. Like, why could it? Why would it hurt that bad? Oh, my God. Play it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Ooh. You can see her just bounce up her tailbone. She's still kind of smiling for a minute, but then she just like kind of like curls over and can't move. And I do have to note this guy. I cannot handle whoever's working there. At one point he just starts removing individual. Watch him. Let's just one at a time. What, what is he doing? What, how is this helping, sir? Oh my God. Like, what, she's just, just like laying there in pain. She's dying. And he's literally moving one block at a time. It's like, go call an ambulance. Look at that. What Ooh, are you doing? Oh her my fucking God. tailbone, bro. So apparently she broke her back in two places. Shut the and fuck up. spent, let me go back on her Twitter, uh, spent like five and a half hours in surgery. Oh my God. Uh, they are getting I feel sued. personally just like triggered by this, you guys, because I, if you've watched me for a, a little while, you know that I have very chronic back pain. And I can't imagine having something like this happen where it's so clearly like a negligent situation yeah. on behalf of the vendor who set this up. But we'll get to that in a sec. And what she did was so mild. It's not, not like she did a backflip yeah, or anything. Like Exactly. Ugh. Like she lands on it at, like you should be able to land on a bunch of foam blocks. Like it, it shouldn't have been an issue. She says, so surgery went well. Five hours, 30 minutes. More fusions than expected. Bones completely crushed and nerve damage to my bladder. Oh my God. The rest of this kind of kills me because if I, we already mentioned she's a porn star. She says, hopefully I'll be able to pee again in the near future. No more squirting probably. <laughs> Had some bleeding around the bone, but overall doing good. Not the squirting. Then says, a lot of pain, but feeling hopeful and ready to bring the heat to walk again. Anyone know where I can get a brace, where I can get my brace blinged or a pink coating for it as long wow. as, for as long as I'll be in it. I sincerely hope she sues the fuck out of them. Applause to her for like having a sense of humor about any of it because I, I, I don't even know what I would be doing right now. But well, and not and that she's not like I said, the only person that broke something. Somebody broke an ankle in there. It, it, like, and I I saw apparently the girl that is in the pit with her in this video had tweeted and was like, "Hey, anyone else that got hurt, please like send Adriana's looking Oof. for." Because I think she's probably trying to get more people for her lawsuit. And oh, the God, biggest thing I've seen come out of it is who do they sue? Like probably oh, there's like fault in, in all the companies, but like TwitchCon itself or it was... You sue TwitchCon, you sue the venue, um, you sue whoever set it up. Lenovo's yeah. who did the booth. And like, if you guys have been Them to these too. kind of conventions, <laughs> these booths, I always am shocked at what certain ones are able to put on. And I always kind of wonder what goes into the setup of it. And something like this just shows not a whole lot. Not much. And I actually <laughs> did see that um, apparently there was like a waiver that you had to sign beforehand. But that waiver is like where you you understand that like you could get injured. Because or like a trampoline jumping place. The way you're not supposed to. For example, like you said, if you're doing a backflip or something and landed wrong. She did not do that. And this very clearly would be like a negligent circumstance that it overrides any kind of waiver because this was fucked. Wow. Yeah, no, this is insane. I'm actually really interested to see where those lawsuits go because for sure they're going to get paid a lot of money. But it doesn't fix the fact that you broke your fucking back. Like, Well, because also, like, not that your back doesn't affect, like, pretty much every single career because it affects just, like, your ability to live normally. But this will, one, likely affect her for the rest of her life. But two, she's a porn star like this. And it was like her, like that. And it affected her bladder and not. she squirts. For real, that's fucked up. <laughs> Can you imagine For real? In, the, in the actual law, in like the trial, that there's some kind of like extra charge because she can't squirt anymore. That's going to happen. <laughs> but like genuinely, like the, the loss of income, like or potentially like. I, Bitch, you better pay me if like, I can't ever squirt again. Right? Like fuck so I feel so bad for her and it doesn't you can't even tell like you could tell that she lands on her tailbone or whatever but the way she made it sound are you kidding me her bladder like everything just fucking got crushed in there yeah if you think of those trampoline places and I don't know if you've ever seen they like clean out the foam to like disinfect it and then like find like 20 billion phones and shit like every day and um when you see it it's so deep like it's a very very yeah. deep pit and so this is not something you should set up in a fucking little tiny like walls you just put up an hour ago on the floor of the venue probably i've i've seen diagrams where it shows how those foam pits are normally made and how it goes like underground and yeah. how there's a huge like there's so much space this it's at a convention center they can't 
they didn't build a hole in the ground. No, no, for sure that's so the floor like everyone's walking on. Yeah, yeah, it would just fill on Like, top and of you it. can tell even just from that camera angle, like, there, it's not, it's a foot or two deep. Oh, Jesus, what idiots. It's insane. How sad and insane. I just can't believe that happened. And to the other person who broke your ankle or whatever it was, like, Jesus. But message oh Ariana, God. or Ariadna, sorry, Adriana. I just, I, I just saw another tweet she posted and it said, well, fun episode. <laughs> Are we done? Is there anything else we should touch on? <laughs> no, I think that's it. Oh, well, um, okay. So we did, <clears throat> sorry, we were discussing via text. Jesse brought it to my attention. I think I actually brought it up a couple months ago. What? If we were to dress up for Halloween. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> What might you guys should we do like a partner like like a duo costume like a couple or costume like, yeah or should we like do something separate and surprise each other oh like, like I that know. I like that I want suggestions regardless yeah if you guys can suggest some fun Halloween costumes because our episode for Halloween would go up the day before Halloween so it's perfect um and we want to dress up maybe if you guys give us suggestions we can choose from that and then surprise each other but then what if we choose the same one that might actually be better but yeah, I don't know. It could be funny. <laughs> I, I just had an idea pop into my head is that would be a good one. But um, I get nervous because I think the Halloween episode was the one where um one of the time Jesus, one of the times where uh frenemies ended for like the first time. Or we the- just won't order a pizza. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just nervous that it's gonna be our cursed episode. But um yeah, leave us suggestions to what you want us to dress up as um below. And yeah, I think that's it for today's episode, this week's episode. Oh my god. And um PS we just hit thirty five thousand subscribers. So thank you guys. Thank you guys. You guys are amazing. I feel like we just said we hit thirty. Like what the fuck? It's literally like um over a thousand a week. I don't know how it's happening. But I know. We Insane. It. Thank you guys so much. I'm so glad you're loving the podcast because we're loving doing it. And um yeah, my babies are crying. I gotta go. <laughs> It's time for me to eat some pizza. Uh, All right. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.